Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at an introduction to alkanes. Now alkanes are a very basic molecule and they don't have a lot of features in them. Uh, they're made of carbon and hydrogen uh, and they can be extracted mainly from crude oil um, and you can use the um, hydrocarbons from crude oil to make things like fuels and oils and tarmac etc. Um, but they are very, very important, um, even though they may be quite unreactive, but they, they are used a lot in society. So what we're going to look at in this video is we're going to look at the branched and uh, straight chain alkanes. We're going to look at the boiling points of alkanes, polarity and solubility. Uh, and these are just, it's just a very um, brief introduction to what they are. So the best place probably to start is the general formula. Uh, and the general formula of alkanes is CNH2N plus 2. And that basically means that if N had a value of 2, say for example, then the number of hydrogens would be 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 2, which is 6. So a hydrocarbon or an alkene with two carbons would have six hydrogens on there. They're described as saturated molecules as well, which means that um, there's no double bonds in there. So we've got a lot of hydrogen atoms um, and no double bonds. Um, and we're also going to look at um, naming these things as well. Now, and um, we've got two different types of molecules here. So we've got a straight chain molecule, which is um, butane. This one's called butane. So I'll write that on there. And let's just underline it. So this one is butane. You can see there's no double bonds in there at all. We can class that as saturated. But we can have an isomer as well of this. So this isomer here is a chain isomer. And um, because we've actually altered the chain, it has the same number of carbons and hydrogens which means it has the same molecular formula, but um, the actual length of the chain is, is changed. So this one, um, as you can see here, we have a methyl group stuck on the second carbon in the middle. So in terms of nomenclature, that is 2-methyl, 2-methyl, uh, and then we have 3 there, which means that's propane. So again, these two are um, isomers of each other, but they're both um, alkanes, and there's no double bonds in there but it is just arranged differently. Now, this actually has a big effect uh, on uh, their actual physical properties, such as boiling points. Uh, and this is what I'm going to come on to now. So I'll come on to that in a little bit. So boiling points um, is quite useful property because we can actually separate out and help to identify some hydrocarbons when we don't know what they are. So boiling points are governed um, by uh, intermolecular forces, so for example, van der Waals forces, um, and you can see that actually, if we have a short chain hydrocarbon, um, so I'll put that on there, so short chain hydrocarbons generally have lower uh, lower boiling points, so I'll put BP on there, and your higher ones, obviously, and um, your higher chain ones will have uh, a higher boiling point, and this is because um, the longer the hydrocarbon chain is, the more intermolecular forces you get between the molecules. So if you imagine we have two hydrocarbons here, which are these two pens. So in between these two pens, you have um, weak intermolecular forces. So you can see there, we have weak intermolecular forces between these two here. Now, if it's a really, really, really long chain, then you have loads of opportunity for an intermolecular force to um, form between the two. So the longer the chain, the higher the van der Waals force, uh, and therefore your boiling point will increase. So your longer chains generally increase a lot. Now, um, this is useful when we come on to um, fractional distillation, where you extract um, fractions from crude oil. And there is a video on fractional distillation, so if you just click on the link below, um, you can have a look at that and see where this is actually applied. Um, we have this setup here as well, where we have and branching, just coming back onto here, we have two molecules here which are branched, and we have two molecules here which are unbranched, and both of these are have the same number of carbons and hydrogens, but actually, um, this one here, with the branching, actually weakens the, um, the intermolecular force between the molecules, um, and actually the boiling point um, of this um, molecules here, or these molecules here with branching, actually reduces. So, and you can see here, there is your, if you look at where the interactions occur with your hydrogen bonding, uh, with your van der Waals, sorry, is actually there. And the rest of the molecule, because we've got these two branches sticking out, it's actually blocking um, the ability to interact with the other molecule, because you can see there's a big gap there. 
So branching actually weakens the van der Waals force between these molecules and lowers the melting point. But if we take the same molecule, just an isomer of it, uh, and a one that's actually unbranched, you can see that actually um, there's interactions between these molecules at more points. You can see where the green lines are. So where this one, there was only one interaction. Uh, this one, there's loads of interaction. And straight chain, um, non-branched molecules um, actually have a higher melting point than your branched ones here. Um, so that's really important that you've got to be able to know that. And you've got to talk about van der Waals and intermolecular forces uh, when we're actually discussing about the melting and boiling points, uh, or mainly the boiling points of hydrocarbons. Um, in terms of their polarity, hydrocarbons are non-polar. Um, so we'll put that on there. Um, they're non-polar, and because they're non-polar, um, they, um, they actually struggle to react. So they're not very reactive. Um, so I'll put that on there, relatively, relatively unreactive. They only really react if you um, if you react your alkanes with something really reactive. So it might be like a radical, for example, uh, or it could be a halogen under extreme conditions. So um, we'll put that on there as well. So they could react um, with radicals, which are free radicals, uh, and they could react with halogens as well to form haloalkane. Um, to form Hilo um, but again, they need quite extreme temperatures, but they are useful in terms of um, burning. They burn quite well, um, and you can use them as a fuel, and that's what our, most of our uses of alkanes are actually for, is the, is the use of fuel. Um, in terms of solubility, um, alkanes are generally um, not very soluble. Um, well, in fact, they're virtually insoluble um, in water, um, so we'll put that on there. Um, and again, the reason why is because they are not polar themselves, um, so they're insoluble in water. Um, and the reasons why is because the um, intermolecular forces between water molecules is hydrogen bonding. Um, so because that bond is actually quite strong, um, compared to the uh, intermolecular forces between alkanes, the hydrogen bonding is a lot stronger and therefore the water doesn't actually interact with your um, with your alkanes, and for that reason, they're insoluble. They don't really dissolve. And um, some alkanes can dissolve in non-polar solvents, um, but in terms of water, they're insoluble. And like I say, that is just a very quick um, overview of um, like an introduction to alkanes. Uh, there are other videos based on these concepts on there. And um, if you have a look for them on my on my channel on the different playlists, for example, intermolecular forces. There's videos on intermolecular forces. Um, there's videos um, on nomenclature, there's videos on isomers as well. So if you're not sure about anything that I've said on there, go and check out those videos um, and they should they might be able to help you. But that's it. Bye.